All right, this is the independent practice for 1.4. It says to complete each ratio table to solve each problem. So hopefully you've had a chance to try these and uh, you're just checking them. Um, if you have any questions, maybe you're uh, watching this to get a little bit more information. Um, but if you still don't understand, please come see me and we can uh, work through them together. All right, let's look at number one. To make five apple pies, you need about two pounds of apples. So, oopsie. If I'm doing uh, five pies, I need about two apples, pounds of apples. Okay, so it's a five to two. For every five pies I make, I need two pounds of apples. Okay. Um, how many pounds of apples do you need to make 20 pies? So I want to get all the way to here. Now, I could go all the way because it goes into it even. So 5 times 4 is going to give me 20. 2 times 4 is 8. So 8 pounds. Um, I could have done a step up. So if I just doubled the recipe. So if I want to go from 5 pies to 10 pies, then I go from 2 pounds of apples to 4 pounds of apples. Then I could double it again. Um, but either way, to answer the question, I need 8 pounds of apples to do these 20 pies. And that is, I was able to figure that out because of this table. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go into number 2. We have 4 balls of wool. Okay, so balls of wool, four, uh, will make uh, eight, how many caps? Eight knitted caps. Okay, so it's four balls to eight caps. Um, how many balls of wool will Mal uh, Malcolm need if he wants to make six caps? Okay. Now, to go from here to here, I can't do it. Um, six to eight, it doesn't divide evenly. So I'm going to take it down to um, 1. I'm going to, if I just have one ball of wool, so to go from here to here, that's divided by 4. So then to go from here to here, I need to divide it by 4. Um, and that would be 2. So if I have one ball of wool, I can make two caps. Now, oops, now that I know that information, I can go from here to here. Uh, two times three gets me to six, so one times three is three. So I need three balls of wool to make six caps. All right, number three. Before leaving uh, to visit Mexico, Livian traded 270 American dollars, and he received 300 Mexican pesos. So for $270, you will get 300 pesos. That's the ratio. Um, now... When he returned from Mexico, he had 100 pesos left. How much did he receive? So this is what we want to figure out. Um, all right. So I could go from here all the way to there. Because 3,000, if I do 3,000 and I divide that by 30, it's going to get me to 100. And then 270 divided by 30 is 9. So he'll have $9. $9 is the same as 100 pesos. But if I didn't want to go all the way, I could have done a baby step here to do uh, from here to here. I see they both end in a zero, so I'm just going to divide it by 10. So that gets me to 300, and this gets me to 27. Then 
I divide this by 3, and I divide this by 3, and it gets me to 9. Okay? So, however you want to do it, there's a couple different ways, um, but you're trying to get the same ratio. And you do it by either going up or down, however you can get to the number you need to to solve the problem. All right, let's look at number four. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. I think I had you doing, um, let's see, one through five. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do this whole page. Let's look at number four. On a bike trip across the United States, Rodney notes that he covers 190 miles, 190, for four days. If he continues at this rate, use the ratio to table to determine six days. Um, okay, so I want to get this down to one day. That's going to be the easiest for me. And then I can, uh, so if I go down to one day, divide that by four, then I'm going to go one day up to six days times six. So, um, but I have to do this first. 190 divided by four. I do my calculator here. 190 divided by four gives me 47.5 miles. So that's what he's doing per day. Now, if he wants to do six more days, so then I just take this times six, and I will get 285 more miles. Okay. All right, let's look at number five. Five has a few different parts to it, but I think we can figure this out. A punch table serves 24 people. People served 24. I'm just going to fill in the table with the information it tells me. And for the 24 people, you need four liters of lemon lime soda. So I need four liters. I need two pints of sugar, I mean sherbet. <laughs> and six cups of ice. Complete a ratio table to represent the situation. So I just did that right there, done with that. How much of each ingredient would you need to make an identical recipe that serves 12 people and then 36 people? Okay, let's do 12 people first. 12 people. If this one serves 24, I'm gonna just kinda cut everything in half. So I need two liters of soda. I need one pint of sherbet. And I need three cups of ice. Now, 36. If I want 36, 36 is going to be this 24, 24 people, plus I need 12 more people. And I just did 12 right here. So it's this recipe plus this recipe here. So instead of the 4 liters of soda, I need 4 plus 2. So I need 6 soda. I need 2 plus 1. So I need 3 sherbet. And I need 6 plus 3. I need 9. Oh, that is a very bad 9. Let's try again. 9 ice. Okay. So, that is what you need if you want to serve 36. Now, the next one is a little bit more complicated. Um, how much would you need to make uh, a recipe that serves 18 people? Now, I'm going from 24 to 18. It's a little bit confusing. I could go down to one unit and then times it by 18. But what I just realized is that I did this 36 right here. And 36, 18 is one half of 36. So I just have to cut my 36 recipe in half. So I'm going to need three soda. Um, I'm going to need one and a half sherbet. And I'm going to need four and a half ice. Okay. So all I did was I realized I had done the work for this 36. 
I wanted half of that, so I just cut everything in half, and it gave me what I needed to know. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're feeling good about this, you may uh, go on. And to do the extra practice on page 45, uh, do numbers 12 through 16, and then rip it out, put your name on it, turn it in.